Hello, I'm Catherine Ashari, and this is Sunday, Program 4. We've completed our first month of Sundays, and today we go from the sublime to the meticulous. The sublime virtuosity of percussionist Evelyn Glennie, and the meticulous and painstaking portraiture of Charles Goldie. And in between, there's Dead Tragic, a sad, sad stage show that's inspiring tears of laughter. And then when potters get together in Rotorua, is it only for the sake of mud and them? And the extraordinary Evelyn Glennie proves that the planned nationwide tour got canned and some of the cast, left unexpectedly unemployed, regrouped in Wellington. They called themselves the Pushing Up Daisies Collective and put together Dead Tragic, an evening of the most soppy songs ever sentimentalised. Jealous lovers, crippled veterans, suicidal teenagers, they're all here. The Green Green Grass of Home, Ruby Don't Take Your Love to Town, Ode to Billy Joe, and who could forget Eddie who died for love and rock and roll. One, two, three, four. Oh. It's a collection of sentimental songs designed to do no more than make you cry and maybe laugh. Dead Tragic rose from the ashes of the Aunt Daisy tour. When Daisy died, the actors were devastated. At first I was really disappointed and kind of in a state of disbelief. I couldn't believe that it could really happen. And it's very much almost as if someone's died because you, you're just helpless, you can't do a mm. thing. We all got back to town and there was nothing to do, you know, all the shows had been cast um, and I'd had this idea for, for Dead Tragic a couple of years ago and, you know, here were people that could sing, that, that you know, were looking for work. Dead Tragic was musical director Michael Williams' idea. Two years ago, he was taking the cast of Sex Tips for Modern Girls through some vocal warm-up songs. And one night I just picked Honey, which, you know, lovely Bobby Goldsborough song. And one of the women in the cast just lost it, burst into tears. You know, what happened? You know, she was absolutely devastated. And, you know, she said it was so sad. What, I don't know what's going on. What, what happened to this woman? Um, someone else then said, Oh, that's, that's a really, you know, what a wimpy song. I prefer Delilah. That's got some guts to it. And we started listing off all these songs where people had unfortunate accidents or <laughs> murdered someone or... Yeah, and, and the idea grew from there. In the 1990s, the leader of the pack becomes a woman. Everyone, without fail, has at least one song that they just go, oh, this brings back so many memories. I hated this song, <laughs> but I loved what was happening while it was happening. Mm -hmm. And for me, um, I had an immediate reaction with Copacabana. When 
Catherine Mitchell was eight, she was given a Dolly Parton recording of Me and Little Andy. And I was just totally <laughs> and utterly taken by the song. I used to, I learnt it off by heart and I used to sing it in my living room with a microphone and stuff and, and you know, pretend I was this heartbroken little girl. And it used to make me weep. And, and then when I got older, I kind of felt um, kind of embarrassed by having liked something like that when I was young and I used to pass it off and joke about it. But I still have somewhere a kind of sentimental attachment to it. And um, so I'm really glad we're doing it in the show because it's my childhood dream coming true. Late <laughs> one cold and stormy night, I heard a dog barking. Then I thought I heard somebody at my door knocking. I wondered who could be outside in such an awful storm. And then I saw a little girl with a puppy in her Before I could say the word, she said, My name is Sandy, and this here is my puppy dog. Its name is Little Lamb. Standing in the bitter cold, just a ragged dress. And I asked her to come in, and this is what she said. Ain't you got no gingerbread? Ain't you got no candy? Ain't you got an extra bed? Me and little Andy had a cake at Baker's Man. My mommy ran away again. We want to don't especially send them up. Um, I think if you, if you shut your eyes and just listened, we don't send them up at all. You know, vocally they are as close to the original as possible with modern technology and synthesizers and, and the backing vocals have been, you know, taken straight from the recordings. Some of the choreography or some of the situations that we put the songs in could be considered a send up, but I mean, there's. I actually quite respect the music in a way, you know, that there is something there that does work. What we've tried to do is maintain a line which, at which the audience can either totally laugh or mm. they can be moved by it if they want to be. Like that choice still needs to be available to the audience. What was it you were looking for that took you like that night? They said they found my high school ring clutched in your fingers tied teen angel can you hear me teen angel can you see me are you somewhere up above and am i still your own true love i don't think no. it would have worked if we'd sent them up rotten because no. there's a, an element of comedy where unless you are sincere about what you're doing then it's not funny you painted up your lips and rolled and curled your tinted hair <laughs> Ruby are you contemplating probably out Sincerity may save many of these songs, but some 
In Darling Jane, the heart-rending tale of a couple caught at sea in a hurricane, songwriter John D. Loudermilk did to rhyme what no one should be allowed to. Aunt Daisy became famous during the First Depression. The Aunt Daisy tour was killed off by the current one. Like Daisy herself, the Pushing Up Daisies collective has refused to be beaten. They've picked up the gauntlet, fought bravely on, and risked their all to stage Dead Tragic. We applied to many sponsors for money, and lots of people loved the idea of the show, but no one had any money to spare, and no one was prepared to part with their money. Um, it just seems like the economic climate so bad at the moment that um, people are really thinking, can we afford to take this risk? But we decided to, and luckily it's been a great success, and we've achieved what we've set out to do. Fresh from a triumphant run at the depot, Dead Tragic is returning for a repeat season, this time at Bats Theatre in Wellington. And sustaining the triumph...